Hey everybody, Dr. Rick coming at you from the H. Uh, it's another melanated episode of the Black Voice. Uh, Ride with Rick edition. I am not going to be long, but what I want to do is while everybody is dibbling and dabbling and poking and pulling and weighing in on this Diddy Cassie thing and what's going to come out of it and all that, which I've already done. Um, and it's so much to unpack uh, because there are, a, a, a multi, there are a multiplicity of microcosms within this grand story. And anyone who has followed me for any stretch of time knows that if I'm talking about any type of issues or stories surrounding celebrities, I've looked underneath the surface of the story to find the microcosmic representation of what we as a people collectively go through. And without that, there's no teaching moment. Without that, there's nothing to add or bring value out of it outside of dipping into someone's life. But when someone chooses to put their life on front street, by becoming a celebrity, I am one to give them as much privacy as they ask for until their life becomes a teaching moment. You know, um, when your life becomes a teaching moment, when your life becomes a cautionary tale, when your life becomes an example of what to or what not to do, then I'm going to explore it. This whole issue with Diddy and what he did. Now, again, I've already given my opinion on it and my opinion was pretty strong. Uh, I drew some ire of some of my brothers uh, because for, mo for a multiplicity of reasons, our men feel that there's things that women can do to justify us harming them. Uh, which is an example of something that I've been talking about for decades, and that is the lack of a universal idea or a universal uh, representation or establishment uh, of what black manhood is. There has to be a universal standard by which we operate, and that standard has to define what manhood is. We have been left to our own uh, devices, our own uh, notions, our own uh, explorations and ideas, and we have have come because of the thirst of power and the need to feel accepted, wanted, and important. We have redefined manhood based off of where we are individually, and so we have an entire collective of black men defining individually what manhood is based on where they are in life versus having a universal standard and everybody trying to ascend to that standard. Um, I have always said that I do not teach, preach, lecture, or expound from a platform of perfection. So when I'm calling men to the mat, I'm doing so for myself as well. There are things that I need to work on. There are places I need to grow. But there are so many that aren't even close. And that's the problem. The problem and the idea is as a leader, you set the tone, you set the energy, you set the climate. And based on the climate you create, you get a response and then you respond by reevaluating the climate. Leadership isn't something you can sit up and say, well, this happened because they did this. When has that worked? I grew up in a house where the one thing I couldn't do in explaining why I did something is tell my grandfather what somebody else did. Were you supposed to do that? Now, the one thing that I never got in trouble for, if, if I got in trouble at school, the one thing I never got in trouble at home for getting in trouble at school for was fighting. I grew up in the hood where you had to defend yourself. And the one thing I wouldn't do if I came home and I got suspended, which didn't happen but a couple of times, but whatever. Um, then, you know, did you win? That was the only question. And that was the end of it. But guess what I could not ever do? Get, get sent home, get a call, he hit a girl. Why? Now, I mean, I grew up at a time, especially elementary and middle school, these girls, 
you know what? You still coming into it growing. I mean, you know, there's some girls out there that could throw hands. Uh, but that was just a rule. And then the older you got, the rule became more profound. Keep your hands to yourself, don't touch them. And then it became even, even more obvious once you had a daughter. You know, you treat your daughter the way you want young boys to treat you. I mean, you treat your women the way you want your you want young boys to treat your daughter. The problem is we've lost ourselves in that. And what is my primary point here? Because I'm about to shut it down. My primary point is while we're talking about Diddy, what happened to Cassie, which was a horrible thing and it's unacceptable and it should not have happened, but it's happening to black women everywhere. The, the second leading cause of death for black women uh, between the uh, black females between the ages of 15 and 44 is intimate partner homicide. Uh, the, uh, domestic violence is a serious and significant issue. Uh, black women go missing at a rate. Uh, <clears throat> significantly higher than those who are non-black, especially whites. Uh, the level of attention and uh, concern in finding these black women who go missing is disproportionately less for black women. You got an all-out brigade for Blondie. Uh, somebody from the hood, sister goes missing. That's absolutely no energy, no effort, no commitment. You know, you may get one story if you get that. Uh, you're trying to uh, raise awareness on social media or whatever because law enforcement is saying that they're probably just a runaway or they're probably just trying to get away from something and they are. They don't take it seriously, but let it be blundy and all hell breaks loose. Well, as men, we don't wait on a society run by others that don't look like us to set the precedence on the importance and the value of our women. That's supposed to be our job. And we, we, we have to develop an understanding of some of the things that frustrate us about our women and understand where it comes from. There are certain behaviors that I just simply abhor uh, when I see it coming from a black woman, but I also have spent the time, energy, and effort to study and understand why it happens. So why it does not excuse it, it explains it. I also understand why men are frustrated. I understand my brothers, but the thing is, as leaders, we have a unique position and a unique responsibility. The unique position is that of leader, that of head, but it also comes with a very, very heavy crown. And that crown is so freaking heavy. Why? Because when we want to act on our emotions and put in check and, and strike back when we get struck at, certain people that are supposed to be under our care are not targets, even when they are acting like enemies. You know, someone said to me yesterday, because I felt like something they said to me was out of line, and it was a female. And she said to me, I'm not your enemy. I'm just pointing out, I'm not saying what I feel is real or true. I'm saying that's what I feel, and I'm not attacking you. I'm not your enemy. Now, it takes a real a person who is really emotionally intelligent and emotionally aware to even realize that this is what's happening in this space right now. And I immediately had to realize, hey, wait a minute, valid point. I don't have to agree with what you're doing, but I'm going to acknowledge what you said. And then we're going to look at why we are both sitting here talking about this. Um, I've had this conversation with other people and it didn't go that way. And then you just sit up and say, OK, obviously, we're not going to get this worked out. So you go to your corner. I'm going to go to my corner. And this has to also happen. Black men, this also has to happen with other black men. I'm not your enemy. I'm not here to harm you. We're having a disagreement, and that's all it is. We're in two different spaces. That's all it is. I have no ill intent or ill will towards you. What I do have is a desire to see you elevate, a desire to see you go higher, a desire to see you do something exceptional, extraordinary, and phenomenal. And I know there's a weight on your shoulder, but I also know that I cannot give you a pass because of that weight. I know that I need to challenge you, and I know that I want to be challenged by others like me. And so that's where we're at. We cannot find it acceptable acceptable or justify harm coming to black women because how we handle our black women is going to be a direct indicator of how we're going to fare in this war for power, this war for elevation, this war for liberation. We have to get an understanding of what it means to be a true man.
it's easy to destroy something that's weaker than you. That's irritating you. You can swat a fly anytime. You can swat a mosquito anytime. But there's a difference when you start swatting our women the way you swat a fly. And granted, nobody can get under your skin like one. They, and they're masters at it and they know it. That's the power they have. They can't overpower you physically. So they're going to do things that irritate you. And you have to be willing and uh, to sit up and say, yeah, I see what you're doing, not working. To me, one of the greatest powers that I've developed is the ability not to meet a woman at her level and her energy. Now, I'm not saying that it can't happen. The more you care, the more it's gonna take for you to learn not to do it. But generally speaking, I'm not coming there. I'm not, I'm not coming there. Uh, I'm definitely not coming there in the way of physical force. But I'm not coming there, I'm not exchanging insults. I'm not talking down. I might be forceful in my tone to let you know, hey, enough is enough. I'm not, I'm not with this so that you know, okay, where I'm at. But as far as being destructive, that has to be an a issue addressed amongst us. We've got to be willing to also allow ourselves to be held accountable. And that is something that really, really, truly bothers me. So, I am not your enemy. And I think you need to start hearing that whenever you engage another black person that may be on your last nerve or even your reserve nerve, or maybe testing you or pushing you in a place that you're not comfortable. Just say that they're not my enemy and tell yourself you're not their enemy. Then try to find the common ground and find the solution. That's my challenge to you. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.